When I started sim racing, my first set of pedals was Fanatic's Club Sport V3s, and one of my favorite features of this set was the small rumble motors that could be configured on the brake and throttle. After upgrading to my current set, the Heusenfeld Sprints, which I love for so many reasons, I did miss the rumble effects and the valuable feedback and additional immersion that they provided. As time passed, I convinced myself that it didn't bother me much, as I had gained a lot from these new higher-end pedals, but I still couldn't ignore that something always felt like it was missing, until now. I recently came across the Pedal Rumble Motor Kit by Sim3D Racing on Etsy, an excellent source for sim racing add-ons. Be sure to check out my other video on my top 5 Etsy sim racing picks. Most of the reviews I'd seen on this were positive, so I decided to give them a shot and formulate my own evaluation and impressions to help you decide if this is something you want to pick up for your particular pedal set. In my opinion, some of the most worthwhile upgrades for sim racing are those that either increase, improve, or add a new layer of feedback while increasing the overall immersion and realism. As sim racers, we can't always easily detect real life physics, so anything that helps me better understand what my virtual car is doing on track is always appreciated. It will be difficult to explain how this kit feels on my pedals, but I'll do my best to give you a good understanding of what you stand to gain and my overall opinion of the kit. I purchased this kit directly from the seller's Etsy store. It did take several weeks to arrive, but the seller made sure to mention this in the description before ordering and kept me up to date on the status of my order. As with most of Etsy products, these are from independent or small home-based sellers, so it's understandable that it could take some time for this to be made and shipped out to you. Once the package finally arrived, I was excited to get these installed and run a few laps to try them out. Let's first go over what you receive in the kit. The unboxing experience was almost non-existent, but as expected. However, all the components were neatly bubble wrapped and carefully packaged in the shipping box. The kit includes two pedal rumble adapters for your brake and throttle pedals. These are 3D printed but appear solid, and if you're not a fan of 3D printed parts, looks don't matter here too much since they are going to sit behind your pedals anyway. The brains of the operation are the Sim 3D Rumble Control Box, also 3D printed but feels well made and connects to your PC via the included USB cable. It's nice to see that this cable was included with the kit. There are two braided connector cables for connecting the rumble motors directly to the control box. As for the power supply, this is only included if you reside in the UK, but for everyone else including myself being in Canada, you will need to source your own country's compatible power supply, which they note the type that is required on their site. This wasn't a huge deal as I was able to pick up an inexpensive one through Amazon. You could alternatively order the UK plug and then use a travel adapter if you have one already in your travel bag. Make sure to select your particular pedal set when you order the kit as they are custom designed for each manufacturer and at this time they offer 17 options which cover most of the popular sets out there. The price of the kit in my opinion was pretty reasonable. Coming in at $120 in the US or for about $160 Canadian plus shipping. Sure, if you have a 3D printer and know how to make something like this and a source for the rumble motors, you could attempt your own DIY, but I think most would be happy to pay for a kit like this that's simply plug and play. The control unit can handle up to 4 rumble motors. There is an option to order an additional one for your clutch pedal for an extra $10. However, I didn't see much value in getting this since I don't drive very many manual cars, and you are not typically on the clutch pedal as much, so this money could be spent elsewhere in my opinion. Although installation is a straightforward process, one of the first things that stood out to me as a simple miss was the lack of an included quick start guide or even a PDF file on how to mount these to my pedals. It wasn't hard to quickly realize that they mount to the sprint pedals using the existing hardware already present on the brake and throttle, but for others this may not be as obvious initially. The addition of a one page guide would be an easy solution in my opinion for future orders. Once the rumble motors are mounted snugly to your pedals, you connect each motor with the included cables to the control box. The control box plugs into an available USB port on your PC, which I continue to run short on even with multiple adapters. Sim racers with many accessories on their rig know what I'm talking about. Then you plug the power supply into your power brick or directly to the wall. As for mounting the control box, it's up to you as it's small enough that it can be attached somewhere on your rig or hidden away out of sight. I hid it behind my pedal mount in case I still need to access it easily for some reason in the future. So once you have everything mounted and installed, it's just a matter of doing some cable management and then you're ready to fire up your PC to start the software configuration process. The great part about this product, and similar to many other sim racing add-ons, is its compatibility with a sim racer's best friend, the SimHub software. 
If you are unaware of this application, it may seem a bit confusing initially, but I can assure you it's simple once you get familiar with it. The seller does have a YouTube video explaining how to set this up, which I'll link below, but here is a snapshot of my settings, how I configured them, and what I enabled on each pedal. I'm still experimenting but found these settings work great so far in most of the popular sim titles, but I encourage you to find the right balance for your liking. Feel free to skip forward here and come back later if you need these settings in the future. So now for the most important part, how do they actually feel? Overall, the motors feel great. The feeling was similar to what I remember on my Fanatic pedals, but with more of an upgraded feel. Even though pedals don't normally vibrate in a real car, you would feel some vibrations through your feet, but these provide much more. So let me explain. When driving a front wheel drive car, you must constantly manage your steering and throttle to get the most out of the front wheels. With this kit, you can now feel when you begin to understeer and you can feel the exact moment your throttle becomes too much for the car to handle when your front wheels start to slide or jump. You will intuitively back off and immediately press as close to that grip edge as possible because now you can feel where it is. Another example is ABS. Although ABS helps you to slow a car down, it also isn't as quick as braking well without ABS. Feeling the point at which your ABS begins to kick in is very useful for improving your lap times out on the track. Another example is feeling lockups in your braking. Sensing the beginning of a lockup is very close to the real life feeling. I recommend minimizing only the things your front wheels experience so that you feel only those through your feet. I set the feel for real wheel traction loss and lockups through my butt kicker so I can intuitively feel where the data from the sim is coming from. Speaking of the butt kicker, some of you may be familiar with the concept of bass shakers or haptics. This kit performs similarly but does not require a dedicated audio amplifier. It relies on a little motor with an off-balance weight which causes a rumbling sensation when activated. It may be beneficial to know the differences between the two. For context, I use both on my rig. I run these rumble motors but I also use a Butt Kicker Gamer Plus unit. This uses an amplifier and is very capable of transmitting smaller or more subtle outputs. It's just like a bass speaker or a subwoofer. Rumble motors, however, don't have that much depth to them. They're pretty much either on or off. Lower frequencies are achieved by spinning slower, higher frequencies are achieved by rotating quickly. Their main weakness, although not a big deal in testing, is that rumble motors have a slight latency before they begin to spin. Traditional bass shakers don't have this latency to the same extent. I think it's safe to say that I love using this product. It certainly filled the gap when I retired my Fanatic Club Sport pedals. Even though this product may be something you could attempt to replicate yourself, if you're anything like me, you may lack the time, tools, and skills to take on such a project yourself, and you definitely won't regret buying this set. I have tried very hard to find faults with this product. I think it's overall an excellent value. A few minor things I'd like to see improve would be the addition of some double-sided tape added to the box so that you can mount the control box neatly anywhere. I'd also like to see improved packaging and a quick install guide provided with the kit. One downside, although not specific to how the kit performs, is that the mounts themselves differ depending on your pedal set, so you'll need new mounts when changing pedals or upgrading, but realistically none of this I think is a deal breaker for potential buyers. This product does an excellent job of convincing me that the floor of my rig is giving me additional information about the car's behavior and the track surface. Similar to my feelings about the butt kicker or haptics, I believe this product is a game changer. Good pedals are the best investment you can make when buying sim hardware in my opinion, and these take an excellent pedal set up a notch. After adding these rumble motors, I have noticed improvements in my overall consistency and ability to drive more complicated cars. Regardless of what pedals you have, if they are compatible with this kit, I think it's a worthwhile investment. However, if you are planning on upgrading your pedals in the near future, I would hold off until that decision is made to avoid having to buy another kit. You can take my word for it, but until you try these out for yourself, you'll better understand the value they bring to a good set of pedals. I hope you found this review helpful, and if you did, do me a favor and click that like button, and consider subscribing to the channel for more sim racing hardware reviews and content. Until the next one, stay safe and happy racing.